Morning, everyone. Can you hear me? Okay. Welcome to Bethany, Bethany Congregational Church this morning, and welcome um, to all the um, visitors that we have here from the uh, Roman family and uh, Bryant family. Um, welcome to uh, all those that are watching from Facebook and Zoom also. Well, it's good that the rains receded here, um, but we, and we're thankful for the Lord for the rain, but we don't want to forget those who have, have lost loved ones and have uh, experienced uh, damage in their communities. So um, let's, let's continue to pray for them. And um, we thank the Lord for this beautiful day that he has made. And yesterday, too, was a beautiful day as families and a family and a friend gathered to celebrate the life of Tammy's father, Michael Bryant. From what um, I heard of some of the people that shared about him, Tammy's father was big and strong in stature, was like six feet six, yes. And um, he was also big and strong in his faith in the Lord as he served um, in his church and, and in the community. He was the patriarch of his family and the father figure to nearly 100 children as Tammy's father and mother opened up their home to be foster parents. And that is truly awesome. Which brings me to this verse, James 1 of verse 26 and 27 says, if anyone considers himself religious and yet does not keep a tight rein on his tongue, he deceives himself and his religion is worthless. Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. So God bless you, Mrs. Bryant. Yes. Um, today we, we will be partaking in communion. Um, there's a few announcements in the bulletin. Uh, we still are being cautious about the flu and COVID. Uh, so be just aware that some are, um, some may be wary of hugs and handshakes and there are Earphones available for um, the hearing impaired and translation. And today we will be doing a missions march for Japan's uh, earthquake, earthquake relief offering. And on March 2nd, we are going to have our rice pounding festival, and we still need volunteers. So uh, there will be a sign up sheet during, sheet during coffee hour. And tone chime practice starts at 12 o'clock today. And um, I think that's it. Um, do we have any uh, praise reports or par prayer requests at this time, Tsugumi? Good morning. Uh, praise report, and then I have prayer request. Praise report about my husband. This is his second year uh, getting chemotherapy. And um, um, this time, new regimen. He doesn't get significant uh, side effect, but his taste um, kind of gone. So. Um, the food doesn't taste as good as used to be. I'm a good cook, so <laughs> I've been trying to uh, give him, uh, you know, good food, but he said, no, it doesn't taste good. So I said, as used to, but it will, we're hoping, it says when the chemotherapy stops, it will come back, so I'm hoping for that. And then his tumor marker keep going down. Also, 
couple of weeks ago, he had a PET scan, which shows the active cancer, uh, but the uh, PET scan couldn't find any active cancer, but uh, still, it's, it's called, um, active cancer is called hypermetabolic uh, cell, so the PET scan couldn't find it, so it is like a hibernating bear. Yeah, so it's still there because the marker shows, blood shows he has a cancer. So hopefully um, continuing this chemotherapy and his cancer will never w wake up. <laughs> That's I'm hoping. So um, everybody's praying for my husband and my family. Thank you very much for your support. Uh, it means a lot to us. And then, um, yes, I'm glad that uh, I'm here. Okay. Um, now I have a prayer request. Do you remember Tammy Lashley that you guys all prayed for her for three years? And then she became cancer free from leukemia. So she was a cancer free last July, 2023. But now um, she has a cancer cell in her uh, bone marrow. Yeah, it came back. So um, she has a doctor from cancer center here, but also she has a doctor from City of Hope. And um, sooner or later, she's gonna go to uh, City of Hope and then we'll stay there like six months to get the treatment. So again, um, please uh, pray for Tammy Lashley and um, um, just the family too. Um, they can go through um, this situation uh, with um, in hand of God, I think, yeah. And then Tammy always says, she keeps repeating every time when I talk to her or her parents too, God is good, God is always good. So she's a very faithful uh, believer. And please uh, pray for her and the family again. Thank you. Thank you, Tsukumi. Um, is Monique. Good morning, um, beautiful congregation. I'm giving glory to God this morning and thanking my dear friend, Pastor Chuck and Jan. You all have been praying for me for a whole year. I've been doing chemotherapy. Pastor Chuck went to all my very first appointments with me as my oldest daughter works out of town and is running two doctor's offices by herself. So Pastor Chuck stood in the gap and it was so appreciated. It took a whole year to do 12 rounds of chemo. And um, likewise, they would put me in the hospital for it. So it wasn't like I could go to the Ridley tree and get a treatment and go home. I had to be in the hospital for four days every time, every three weeks. And then towards the end, every two weeks for five days. And it's been grueling and just horrific, but I never prepared for death. I only prepared for a fight. I prepared for a battle. And we say at our house and other um, places that I've worshiped, God is good and he's good all the time. You know, um, I don't know how I would have made it without my faith without the seed of Christianity in my heart, in my soul, knowing what I know God has spoken to me um, to the point where I, I know he's there and I know he has his hand on me. And I know he has his hand on my family. But um, little did you all know, your prayers were so appreciated and so very needed. I would like to ask you to keep praying. I just finished this chemo last week. So um, now we have two months. Well, at the end of March, they'll be doing a PET scan and a CT scan and blood work. And that's all been going really good for 
like half a year. It hasn't shown anything. Um, it's all been great, the results. So we're praying it doesn't ever come back. It was pancreatic cancer. It was crazy the way they found it. They said by mistake, I say by the grace of God. So um, thank you so much for your prayers. Please continue to pray for me and my family. And I pray for all of you. I, like I said, your prayers have been so appreciated, so needed, more than you'll ever know. Thank you. Well, let me pray. Let's pray for Monique right now. And uh, Lord, just thank you for the treatment that she's been able to get and the surgery and the success. And I just pray, Lord, that you will continue to heal her from the effects of the chemo and that you will keep her cancer-free. And we also pray, Lord, as she starts new life, that you would open up a new job for her and that you would just provide for all of her needs and her daughter, Jamia, and her needs. And just use them for your glory, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Name. Amen. 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 Uh, we're going to do a missions march right now for um, uh, Noto Help uh, Japan Earthquake Relief. So I'll say a little prayer and then the ushers will come up uh, to, to, uh, to collect the, the funds. Craig, I'm going to pray first. Okay, sorry. Uh, we pray for uh, the missions, uh, missionaries in Japan, Noto Help Japan Earthquake Relief. We pray, we pray for those in Japan that are suffering devastation and loss of loved ones due to the earthquake. Please comfort them and bless them with much needed supplies and relief. And may this disaster be an opportunity for those that don't know you to seek you and trust in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we exalt your name on high. You are the Lord of Lords and King of Kings, creator of heaven and earth. And we praise and worship you today as a congregation and every day for all the blessings and hope that we have in you. We also lift up those that need your healing touch, Lord, physically as well as mentally and emotionally. We lift up Monique to you. Please continue to touch her with your healing power. Guide her, Lord. Holy Spirit, guide her to 
a new job and keep her moving forward, Lord. And we also lift up Tsugumi's friend, Tammy, to you as her cancer has come back. Please be with her as she's doing her treatments at City of Hope. May she feel your presence always and may your healing hand be upon her. And we also pray for all the other people on our list in our bulletin. You know who they all are. And all the other people in our personal lives that are not on the list, Lord. We trust in you that you answer prayer. And we pray for um, Tammy and Eric Roman and Tammy's mother and their entire family. Please comfort them at the loss of their father. Lord, you are all-knowing and all-powerful. And you are ever-present. You know everything about what's happening in our world today. We pray for what's happening in Israel as well as in our country and other places in the world. Give us hope and strength as we wait on you. And Lord Jesus, thank you for the many blessings you continue to bestow upon our Bethany family. We ask you to guide, protect, and bless our wonderful pastors, Pastor Chuck, Pastor Derek, and Mariko Sensei. Bless the elders and all the others who serve you lovingly at Bethany. And Lord, guide the planning of the upcoming Mochi Pounding Outreach. May this event be fruitful for you. And may our worship service today be pleasing in your sight. As always, please bring back our prodigal sons and daughters to you into your loving arms. And please bless our tithes and offerings to be used for your will and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, communion? No. Oh, special music, okay. So we're going to have special music. Uh, with Kelly? Yeah. Kelly Carroll, yes. <laughs> yeah, yesterday, Kelly blessed us with uh, special music at the memorial service, and she's a good friend of Tammy, and she's agreed to bless us this morning with a special song. She'll sing a cappella. So. Amen. Thank you. Um, just in lieu of what I've been hearing this morning, I know that it's our faith that moves God. And so with the needs that we have, I'm going to sing that song. I have the faith that sees the invisible, that expects the incredible, that believes the impossible faith that can conquer anything faith that uproots life's problems faith to know that god he can solve them faith to envision my freedom, I have faith that can conquer anything. Faith to reach the unreachable, and faith to fight the things that are unbeatable, and faith to remove the unmovable faith that stands the invincible faith that can conquer anything alone. Oh, oh, we must have faith to reach those things that are unreachable and faith to fight the things that are unbeatable and faith that will remove 
that will remove the unmovable faith that stands, that stands, that stands the invincible faith that can and will conquer anything. Hallelujah. Wow, thank you, Kelly. Uh, could you move to uh, Santa Barbara? And uh, <laughs> Well, if you would like to stand and join us in congregational worship, we're going to start with, Lord, I need you. Oh God, how I need 
the truth. To prepare our hearts for communion, we'll sing Remembrance. Oh, how could it? 
should be that my God would welcome me into this mystery. Say, take this bread, take this wine, now the simple may divine for any to receive. By your mercy we come to your table. By your grace you are making us faithful. Lord, we remember you. And remembrance leads us to worship. And as we worship you, our worship leads to communion. We respond to your invitation. We remember you. See his body, his blood, know that he has overcome every trial we will face. None too lost to be saved, none too broken or ashamed, all are welcome in this place. By your mercy we come to your table. By your grace you are making us faithful. Lord, we remember you. And remembrance leads us to worship. And as we worship you, our worship leads to communion. We respond to your invitation. We remember you. Dying you destroy our death. Rising you restore our life. Jesus, come in glory. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Lord, we remember. we worship you. Our worship leads to communion. We respond to your invitation. We respond to your invitation. We remember you. Yes, Lord, we remember you, and we respond to your invitation to fellowship with you and remember you and all you did for us on the cross. Lord, we worship you today. Please prepare our hearts for this time of communion. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And please be seated. Thank you for worshiping with us. Communion is open to everyone who professes Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. 
And so you don't need to be a member of our church to partake. We welcome everyone to partake who has faith in the Lord. And I'd like to just read from Matthew 26. The Lord said, Now as they were eating, Jesus took bread, and after blessing it, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take and eat, this is my body. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink all of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink again of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. Let's pray, and then we'll pass out the elements. Lord, we gather today to not only worship you, but to remember what you did for us on the cross and the suffering that you went through, how you left glory in heaven to come down to be a man and a man who would pay the awful penalty of death on the cross. Lord, thank you for sacrificing your body and your blood on our behalf to give us a new covenant of forgiveness. Lord, we worship you today, we remember you, and please prepare our hearts for this time of communion. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now if the uh, servers can come. Take both cups out. The bottom cup has the, the bread. And this is kind of our COVID avoidance uh, way of doing communion. And please hold on to your two cups and we'll partake together. Now, if you take, take the bread from the bottom cup, remember that the Lord Jesus said, take and eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So let's take the bread. At the end of the meal, he took the cup and he said, this cup is a new covenant in my blood 
It's shed for the forgiveness of sins. Please do this in remembrance of me. Let's pray. Lord, thank you again for what you did on our behalf, taking the pain and the shame and the suffering on the cross. And yet, in your death, you conquered death, and you rose again so that we could have assurance of eternal life. We thank you and worship you today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today's scripture reading is from Luke 4, verses 1 to 13. The temptation of Jesus. And Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness for 40 days, being tempted by the devil. And he ate nothing during those days. And when they were ended, he was hungry. The devil said to him, if you are the Son of God, command this stone to become bread. And Jesus answered him, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone. And the devil took him up and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment, in a moment of time. And he said to him, To you I give all the authority and their all this authority and their glory, for it has been delivered to me, and I give to whom I will. If you then will worship me, it will be yours. And Jesus answered him, It is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. And he took him to Jerusalem and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, if you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here. For it is written, He will command His angels concerning you to guard you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. And Jesus answered him, It is said, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. And when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until an opportune time. May the Lord bless the reading of this word. Uh, thank you, Denise. Anybody struggled with temptation this week? Um, no, no, no take. <laughs> oh, I've had some temptations this week. Temptations to get angry and tell people what I really think of them, or temptations to just quit and move to uh, the Caribbean. But instead, we'll just take a vacation. Uh, um, I sort of dreaded doing this we agreed to go through the book of Luke and um, I just had a feeling that I would get hit with some temptations as I prepared for this message and <clears throat> sure enough uh, had some big ones and little ones had a little one last night when we went out to eat um, the waitress came by and gave us some menus and then she left her pad there and I opened it up and there was a stack of twenty dollar bills inside well I wasn't too tempted because our friends were with us and my wife was with me and and I wasn't really wasn't really in need of money at that time but I thought now what if I had been alone or gone in there with the friend who was gonna buy me a meal and I was broke and he went to the restroom and I saw this stack of 20s on the table would be tempting to just take one, oh well, just reduce her tip a little bit, you know. Uh, Satan has many ways of trying to tempt us. 
And we need to be aware of his strategies in order to have a battle plan for when he attacks. Because the good news is Satan's defeated. He's a defeated foe. Jesus defeated him on the cross. But the bad news is that he's still active. He's still prowling around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. And he can't steal your salvation, but he can steal your testimony. He can make you look bad, and then that makes God look bad. So he's out there trying to get us so he can get to God. And so as I studied this, I really thought we need to, in order to gain victory over temptation, we need to understand Satan's tactics and then understand what Jesus in the New Testament teaches us about spiritual warfare and how to defeat those temptations. So first thing, just for a little background, did you ever wonder why, why did God allow Jesus to be tempted in the wilderness? Well, I think one reason is because the Bible says he became our sympathetic high priest. He had to experience everything that we would go through and even more so that he could sympathize with our weaknesses. And when we could go to him boldly asking for help, he would understand us. And then it also was proof that he loved the Father and that he loved us. He loved the Father so much he wanted to do his will and not be taken off course by the evil one to satisfy his own will. And it was a lesson for us. He was teaching us how to deal with Satan's attacks and temptations. And so I wanted to discuss a little bit about some of Satan's tactics. Satan is a liar. The Bible says he's the father of lies. He will just flat out lie or he'll tell half truths, partial, partial lie, partial truth. He'll take truths out of context and change the meaning. He'll take God's word and twist it, change it slightly or just take it out of context. Anything he can do to deceive us, he's a liar. And he doesn't fight fair. Um, he comes after us when we're weak and we're tired, we're hungry, sick, stressed, lonely, or angry, like Jesus. Jesus was alone, he was hungry, he was thirsty, he was tired, he was hot in the wilderness, and that's when Satan wanted to attack him. So if you're trying to diet, you know, he'll tempt you with uh, chocolate cake. Uh, if if your spouse has gone for a week or two, he'll tempt you with an appealing companion. If you're in pain or depressed, he'll tempt you with drugs and alcohol. If you're angry, he'll tempt you with thoughts of revenge or even violence. So he doesn't, always, doesn't only attack when we're weak or where we're weak. He knows our weaknesses, but he also goes after us, our strengths when we think, ah, I'll never do that, you know. And so, uh, Proverbs 16, 18 says, Pride goes before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. And I've been tempted by the evil one after a spiritual victory, and you start getting overconfident, and, uh, or you see some other person who, who fell into sin, and, well, I would never do that. And that's when he comes at you. That's when he's going to attack. And I think his favorite two times are when we're proud and when we're angry, is, is when the evil one likes to go at us. And, of course, Satan hates God, and he wants to dishonor God. So if he can get us to doubt God, then he's dishonoring God as well. An illustration of that is when he tempted Eve. And he's, he basically was implying, well, you know, why don't you just take the fruit? And God's withholding something from you. If God loved you, he would let you have this fruit. He would let you eat from any tree in the garden. If God really loved you, he wouldn't keep you from having that knowledge of good and evil like he has. He doesn't want you to be like him. He just wants to keep you put down. 
And that's what Satan does to us. He'll, you go through a diff, difficult time, well, God doesn't really love you. You know, look, why would he let you go through this? If he really loved you, he'd get you out of this mess. Or if he really loved you, he'd let you eat a dozen donuts every morning and not gain a pound, you know. But <laughs> I haven't been hit with that temptation yet. But uh, Satan lies to us, and he likes to lie about God, and especially put doubts in our minds that God doesn't really love us. And he basically tempts us in three different areas, which you can see in Genesis 3 and also the Apostle John mentions them in 1 John chapter 2. He says, Do not love the world or the things of the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that's in the world, the desires of the flesh, the desires of the eyes, and the pride of life is not from the Father, but it's from the world. And the world is passing away along with its desires, but whoever does the will of God abides forever. You remember when Eve was tempted... It says in uh, chapter 3, verse 6, when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, so her flesh is being tempted. Oh, this looks like good food. And that it was a delight to the eyes. It must have been some kind of really beautiful kind of fruit. And the tree was to be desired to make one wise, so that appealed to her pride. She wanted to be wise like God. She took and ate and gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate. And Jesus was tempted in those three same areas. The first temptation, the devil said, If you're the Son of God, command this stone to become bread. But Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone. And that's from Deuteronomy 8, verse 3. And the rest of the verse says, but man lives by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. And so he was not only tempting Jesus just because he was hungry. You know, well, you're hungry, you can make bread. You know, if God really loved you, he wouldn't have let you be hungry. And he certainly would have provided something for you. So just go ahead and make some bread. And there's another part of the temptation. Jesus is also being tempted to think about, well, I can win lots of people if I just throw a big banquet every time I go to preach and I just turn the, turn the rocks into bread and sushi and everything else that the people want. And the devil's saying, you know, you could, you could really make an impact. You just change stuff into great food and you'll gather a great crowd. But Jesus said, we don't live by bread alone. And the second temptation was an appeal to his eyes when the devil took him up and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time and said, to you I will give all this authority and their glory for it's been delivered to me and I give it to whom I will. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered, it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only shall you serve. Now the kingdoms of the world, the New Testament it says that Satan is still the ruler of this world. And Jesus said that. So he has some say in who can rule over kingdoms. When you think about some of the evil leaders that are around the world, uh, Satan definitely, I think, has had a hand in that. Of course, God is over Satan. God can decide what to allow and what to not allow. But Satan really did have some authority. And yet Jesus knew that eventually he was going to be king of this world. He's already king of the universe. And the Bible says that the keys of the kingdom are going to be given to Jesus and he's going to set up his kingdom on earth. Jesus knew that. But first, he also knew he had to suffer. He couldn't reverse the order. He couldn't take all the kingdoms and then decide, maybe later on I'll suffer. He had to go down in order to come up. And he wasn't willing to give in to the evil one 
and try and reverse the order. And I thought about this, it really, uh, it really bothered me. But when Satan tempts us, say, say you've got this uh, side income, and Satan says, well, you don't really need to show that on your income tax, you know. No one ever going to know about that. You don't need to pay tax on that. You need that money. You earned it. And Jesus says in Romans 13, pay your taxes. And I'll provide you everything you need. Well, if we listen to Satan's temptation, and, well, I'm not going to pay taxes on that. All of us would say, well, I'd never bow down and worship Satan. But if we listen to his temptation and we cheat or we steal, rather than do what the Lord's telling us, aren't we in effect saying, well, I think Satan's got a better idea than the Lord. And we're honoring Satan instead of honoring the Lord. I mean, that, that really bothered me when I started meditating on that this week. And, and I hope it helps me more when temptation comes. And that third temptation that Jesus went through was when Satan took him up to the pinnacle of the temple and said, if you're the son of God, throw yourself down. For it's written in Psalm 91, he will command his angels concerning you to guard you. And on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. And Jesus said, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. And you notice all of these came from Deuteronomy that Jesus quoted. Now, Jesus knew that he could have jumped from there, and if he could walk on water, he could have jumped off there and just landed softly on the ground. He knew he could do that. He knew he could turn stones into bread. And yet, he said, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. This is an example of how Satan takes verse out of context from Psalm 91 and might try to convince you, well, God will protect me from anything. I can do anything stupid I want, and God's going to protect me. And that's how Satan likes to deceive us. He'll, he'll take a, a verse out of context. And the context of Psalm 91 is, is really when, in a time of judgment, when the Lord is executing judgment, his people will be protected. Like in Egypt, when all those judgments came against the people of Egypt and the Israelis were not touched. And when the Lord comes back and executes judgment on the earth, we won't be touched. Amen. And, but the devil wants us to think, well, if, I, if anything happens to me, well, God's, word, God's lying to me. He's not taking care of me. And he's trying to deceive and take his word out of context. In the same way, he misquoted scripture with Eve. Remember, he said to Eve, did God really say you shall not eat of any tree in the garden? Well, actually, God said you could eat of any tree in the garden except one tree. But Satan made it sound a lot worse. Oh, you can't eat out of any of the trees. You can't eat out of the trees you want to, treat, want to eat of, out of. And he'll do the same with us. Um, he'll get us, get us confused about God's word. So we need a battle plan when we're uh, battling with the evil one. And this is the battle plan that, that I've come up with. First thing, remember, temptation's not a sin. Sometimes when you're tempted, Satan will try to tell you, well, you're already defeated. You're, you're tempted by this, so that means you're not a good Christian. And James, James said, each person's tempted when he's lured and enticed by his own desire. Then desire, when it's conceived, give birth to sin. And when sin's fully grown, it brings forth death. So the, the temptation's not a sin. Um, and where there's no desire, there usually is not, not any temptation. Like uh, yesterday, we had great barbecue at the memorial service. And I 
ate more than I should have. And when I got home, you could not have tempted me with chocolate cake no matter what. I was, I was full. And <laughs> so there was no desire. But when there's a desire, if I'm hungry, then I'm definitely tempted to eat. And in, when we're surrounded by brothers and sisters, that's another good protection when we're being tempted. Then the second thing that we have to remember is we have the Holy Spirit in us. And 1 John 4, 4 says, Little children, you're from God and have overcome them, for he who is in you is greater than he who's in the world. So we have to remember we have the Holy Spirit in us, just like Jesus had the Holy Spirit with him, and he's greater than the evil one. We have power, more power than the evil one. And we're no longer slaves to sin. In Romans 6, it says, we know that our self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing so that we'd no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. So even though we're tempted, even though we still sin, we're not, we don't have to sin. We're not a slave to it because we have the Holy Spirit in us and we've been set free from that slavery. And one of the things that probably helps me the most is 1 Corinthians 10, verses 12, 13, and 14. Now, I wrote in the bulletin uh, one warning, two promises, and a command, but I, as I went over it again this morning, I realized, well, is that really three promises and a warning and a command? The warning is in verse 12, Therefore, let anyone who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. And again, we just need to be sure we're not getting a little too proud or think, oh, I'll never, I'll never fail in that way because that's where the enemy is going to go after you. And then there's three promises in verse 13. The first promise is you're not going to be tempted beyond what anybody else in the world has experienced. There's not going to be some special off-the-charts temptation for you that no one else in the world has never experienced. And then, when you're tempted, God will not let you be tempted beyond your ability to resist it. But with temptation, he will also provide the way of escape. And that's your third promise. And then the command in verse 14 Therefore, my beloved, flee from idolatry. Sometimes God gives us a way of escape, but we don't flee. We don't. If you're in a place full of temptation, you need to flee. And when he gives you that way out, flee. And so we've got those, those promises. It won't be something that's beyond what's common to man. It won't be beyond your ability, and he'll give you a way of escape whenever you're tempted. But we have to take that escape. Amen. And he told Timothy in another passage, flee from youthful lusts. We need to run when he says to run. And then remember the spiritual armor. I mean, this is another sermon, so I won't go into detail, but remember the spiritual armor that we have, the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, you're righteous. Don't let the evil one tell you that you are not righteous in God's eyes. We have shoes of the gospel of peace. We have peace with the Lord. He's not, he's not our enemy. He is for us, not against us. And in all circumstances, take up the shield of faith with which you can distinguish the flaming darts of the evil one. That's the lies, the deception. Or, you know, God doesn't love you. Those are all those darts that he throws at us. And you've got that shield of faith. No, that's a lie. That's a lie. That's a lie. And then, of course, what Jesus taught us to use, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Oh, and the helmet of salvation. You can't take your salvation away from you. You've got that helmet guarding your salvation. And... Our offensive weapon is the sword of the Spirit. 
And so he gave us three examples of how he uses the sword when he said, man shall not live by bread alone. You shall worship the Lord your God and him only shall you serve. You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. And so when Satan's giving you temptation, you just hit him back with the word. And some people might say, well, pastor, you know, you study the word, you know, you, you remember all those things, but man, I can't remember the right word in the right time. And I'm sure you've had that experience. You get home and you say, oh man, I should have said that. I knew it, you know. Why didn't it come to me at that time? <clears throat> well, I think the second verse that Jesus used is kind of your all-purpose. If you can't remember anything else, it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. I think that one can apply to any temptation that comes. If you just remember that. Um, when I was thinking about how the, the evil one just tries to uh, trick us, I thought about the movie Back to the Future. You remember uh, Marty McFly was being challenged, yeah, chicken, chicken, and he comes up to the stop sign and the guy challenges to a drag race. If he had done that, he would have gotten into a car accident. But he decided not to take the bait and realize to be humble. And we have to be humble, I think, when we're, when we're engaging with the evil one. Admit that we don't have the power, but we've got the power inside us in the Holy Spirit. And we just humble ourselves and we don't take the bait. And we say, fine. I'm just going to trust the Lord on this one. And the final thing is to pray in the Spirit. What, he's, what uh, Paul said in Ephesians 6, remember to pray in the Spirit. I think of it as praying to the Supreme Commander in Heaven for air support when you're being attacked. And He will provide that support. We've got the promises of uh, a way of escape, and we've got the Holy Spirit. We've got that promise that he will answer our prayers. So we can't lose. And he's the victory. He's already got the victory. And so don't let the enemy take you down. Don't let him deceive you. And um, I think we can all be victorious. So let's pray. Lord, I just thank you for your example of using the sword of the Spirit to defeat the evil one. And Lord, I thank you for your promise to give us a way of escape. I thank you for your Holy Spirit. Lord, I pray that each one here would be able to stand up to the attacks of the evil one, and that you would not let any of us be deceived and uh, dishonor you. Lord, please surround us with your angels and fill us with your spirit each day. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, let's sing one more worship song written by Martin Luther. A mighty fortress is our God. Stand, stand and join us. is our God, the bulwark never failing, our helper he amid the flood, of mortal ills prevailing, for still our ancient foe does seek to work us woe. 
His craft and power are great, and armed with cruel hate. All earth is not His equal. To win our own strength confined, our striving would be losing. Without the right man on our side, the man of God's own choosing, the task who that may be, Christ Jesus it is he, Lord said of his name. From age to age the same, and he must win the battle. And though this world with devils filled, should threaten to undo us, we will not fear or God hath will. His truth to triumph through us. The prince of darkness grim, we tremble not for him. His rage we can endure, for lo, his doom is sure. One little word shall fail him. Have heard about all earthly powers, no thanks to them abided. The spirit and the gifts are ours. Through him who with us sideth, let goods and kindred go, this mortal life also, the body they may kill, God's truth abideth still. His kingdom is forever. And our doxology today is Seek Ye First, the first and third verses. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. from the book of Jude. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy, to the only God our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time and now and forever. Amen. 
Amen. Please join us for fellowship in the fellowship hall. And then there are tone chimes practice in the corner room and Japanese classes in the classrooms. <laughs>